Let's talk about what your options are for charging your Tesla at home. First, what comes with your car? A style and travel bag, a mobile charging cable that can be used at home or when traveling, an adapter for a standard outlet, also known as a NEMA 515, and a J1772 adapter. This J1772 adapter, man, that's such a sweet and catchy name, works for a good number of, but not all, non-Tesla chargers you see in public spaces. So what can you set up at home? You have three main charging options and a fourth, not really charging at home option. Option number one, a regular 120 volt plug-in outlet, sometimes referred to as level one charging. This will get you anywhere between three and seven miles per hour of charging depending on your vehicle and particular electrical infrastructure. So it's pretty slow, but if you're a low mileage or infrequent driver, this may work for you. But charging can be even slower, or even have difficulty being able to charge on really cold days. When the surrounding air is below 20 or 30 degrees, you can expect to only get one to two miles per hour of charging, or perhaps even no charge at all when there's sub-zero degree weather. This is due to the car spending most of its energy trying to warm the battery up to accept the charge. The plus side is, is that there's usually no extra cost for this charging option since you can use an existing outlet. So let's watch this happen. Here you can see me plugging the charging cable into a regular outlet and then the other end plugged into the Model 3 long range. Looking at the screen in the car, you can see the charging happening. You can see the voltage and amps jump up on the screen as the charging starts, reflecting what you get from a standard outlet. You can also see that we're getting one kilowatt of charge, which gets us about four miles per hour of charging. Option number two, a 240 volt plug-in outlet. You may have heard of 240 volt charging as level two charging. You can see the large difference between the standard outlet and one of these 240 volt plug-ins. Again, the 515 comes with the car. Any of these other ones, you have to buy. So order ahead from Tesla's store for the one you need. These outlets can get you between 12 and 35 miles per hour of charge, commonly in that 22 to 35 range. This may not sound like a lot, but it's a perfect charge rate for 90% of people for 90% of daily situations. The only time this charge isn't fast enough is if you have back-to-back -back large road trips or commutes where the car can't be parked for more than a few hours between the charge again. Cost can be minimal or spendy depending on existing electrical setup. If you have a 1450 outlet or at least some 240 volt infrastructure nearby, it could range from just the cost of an adapter from Tesla to a few hundred bucks. If you don't have anything in place, it could start running more along $500 to $2,000. Your situation will vary. Find an electrician to get a more accurate estimate. But generally, the cost will be more expensive the further your electrical panel or sub-panel is from where you'll be charging your car. Because of these reasons, a level 2 outlet is what most people get installed in their house or garage, as it is usually the most affordable and practical, especially since you can get a full charge on your car each night if needed. I have a level 2 outlet in my garage, and I will talk in more detail about my specifics at the end of the video after going through these options and comparing them. To see this in action, Let's try this on my car again. You can see I plugged in the car using the 1450 outlet. This time when we get in the car to watch the charging start, the first difference you can see is that the max amps, or current, is now 32, compared to the 12 from the standard outlet. You can also see that the volts now shows 240 compared to the 120 from the standard outlet. This is showing in real time to give you a sense of the full experience of charging. It takes a moment, but the charging ramps up to eight kilowatts, which gives me about 30 miles each hour that I'm charging. Option number three, a Tesla wall connector. This is still in the level two family, but there is no outlet. Instead, it's directly wired to your electrical. This means you don't need to use your mobile charging cable like the first two options. You can typically get 30 to 44 miles per hour of charging from this, depending on your model. That extra 10 to 15 miles of charging will cost you though. The wall unit itself is usually $300 to $500 depending on tax credits. And there is higher material and labor cost to handle the additional amps. Plan on a minimum of $500 more than a level two outlet install. The friends I know with a wall charger all say they wish they would have just put in a level two outlet. The people who have a need for a wall charger certainly exist, but it's a small group of Tesla owners. Option number four, question mark? No in-home setup. Only use public chargers like at grocery stores, parking garages, chargers at work, etc. If you do this and have to pay, it will be expensive and be like filling up for gas in terms of cost and inconvenience. 
And if you charge at a Tesla supercharger, a DC fast charger, or a Chatamo charger, which are all different and way faster than level two chargers, then you run the risk of being harder on the battery and causing more degradation. I don't know of anyone personally in the Midwest that does this, but I've heard of some people who primarily charge the vehicles this way. To summarize and compare, I strongly recommend going with some sort of level two outlet. If you're in a situation where a level one or a wall connector makes more practical or financial sense, then go for it. But a level two outlet will be perfect for the vast majority of people. The fear of not having enough charge is real, since a gas car can top off almost anywhere. But I'm here to assure you that if you drive and commute daily like I do, and take day trips of two to four hours of driving on many weekends, having the ability to charge at 30 miles per hour at home is plenty. Figure out your home charging right away. Hopefully you're thinking about this before the purchase of the car, but if not, hopefully you've got some delivery time to get this squared away. One final note about charging, and that's your electrical plan. Reach out to your electric company and go to their website to see what plans they offer. Many have other plans, like time of day rates or electric car programs, that could help save big. They may even help with electrical installs. Don't forget to shop around again if you can be serviced by more than one electric company. Okay. The rest of this video is just me talking about my personal situation to help show you what I did. I have a level two outlet, specifically the NEMA 1450 from Tesla's website. I already had a sub panel in the garage that was very close to where I parked my car, so my install was very inexpensive. I get about 30 miles per hour of charging in warmer weather. I'll provide an update in the winter on how that holds up. I've heard different things around charging speed in the winter, so I'm excited to see how my uninsulated but attached garage affects my charging. I charge my car to 55% each night, as the about 190 miles of range is plenty each day. And if I need to go on a longer trip, I just change my charge limit to 80, 90, or 100% right before my trip. Best practice is to charge no more than 90% unless you plan on driving it right away. I also use Tesla's function of scheduled departure and scheduled charge start. Scheduled departure, as you can see on the screen here, tells your Tesla when you would like to have the car charged by. So it'll start charging just in time to get your car to the charge level you set by the time you set. Scheduled charge start will tell your Tesla a fixed time to start charging. This is useful if you have electrical pricing based on time of day so you can charge your car during off-peak hours. You can also now set up these schedules in the Tesla app. Well, that's how I charge my car at home. I'm very happy with the level two outlet. I had no issues with the setup, zero problems with charging, and I've always had more than enough miles for my daily commutes and long trips. I hope this helped you in your decision around how to charge your car at home. If so, please consider a like and subscribe. Take care. We'll see you up north.